Hello guys, as requested by many of you, today I'm going to analyze the Knolly bikes, in particular the Varden model. Okay, so the Knolly bikes uh, use a kind of uh, four bar system, uh, or link system, with an additional shock linkage. Okay, so the wheels and the brakes are mounted on the seat stay as the horse link or the FSR but here you also have an additional shock linkage that is used to tune the leverage ratio. One, one very particular aspect of this suspension is that the main pivot of the suspension is really close to the bottom bracket. So as a result of this, the anti-squat will be quite low. In fact, the average anti-squat for the Knolly bikes are around 40 to 50%. This value can be close to zero when you use a very small cog at your cassette. The fact that the Knolly bikes have a very low anti-squat was already expected and if you saw the, their website they also mentioned that. Okay, so Knolly bikes use a different philosophy about anti-squat and they say that uh, many bikes on the market use the, the, the chain torque in order to pedal smoothly. Okay, so this is the traditional anti-squat that we that I show you in previous videos okay so the use of the shen torque to keep the, the suspension to compress okay so and they say that the problem with this philosophy is that you cannot turn this feature off which is true in you cannot turn the anti-squat off okay so the Knolly 4x4 suspension basically relies on the, the shock platform okay the shock lockout or the low speed uh, platform uh, adjustment uh, to provide you the the best uh, pedaling efficiency that that you can have. Basically, you have the anti squat philosophy, and you have the shock platform philosophy that Knolly uses. Okay, in the anti squat philosophy, the anti squat automatically kicks in when you hit the pedals, meaning that you when you promote uh, chain tension when you do chain torque the anti-squat automatically kicks in. Okay, so you have always good pedaling efficiency. However, when you are pedaling, the suspension might not be fully active to bumps. Okay, because the, the shen torque is, is trying to extend the suspension, the suspension might be not fully active to bumps. One feature of this is that you cannot turn this off. On the shock platform philosophy used by Knolly, so they have a very low anti-squat, and the pedaling efficiency comes mostly from the shock platform, either it's on or either it's off. When the shock platform is off, uh, you can achieve a very active suspension uh, during pedaling. The disadvantage of this is that you need to remember constantly to switch the, the shock platform on or off, depending on the case. And when the shock platform is on, you also lose suspension plushness as it happens in the anti squat case, okay? The difference here is that when the, the, the platform is on, you either lose this plushness either if you are pedaling or not. And in this case here, you mainly lose the, the activity of the suspension when you are pedaling. This is the main difference. Okay, so overall, uh, for a trail or mountain uh, use, I think, in my opinion, that this philosophy uh, makes more sense. However, it's always nice to have a different philosophies. And more important than that is that you can, uh, in fact, understand the difference bet between uh, different philosophies. Regarding braking, the Knolly websites also mention they mention that, and they say that the 4x4 suspension is fully active uh, under braking forces. Okay, so every system, every site always say this, but sometimes this is not true. In the case of the Knolly 4x4 system, that is true. Why? Because the brakes are mounted, are mounted on the seat stay. Okay, so the seat stay, which is here, it's connected to the main frame by this link and by this link. Therefore, the instant center of this suspension is more or less 
okay, more and less over this point. So it's a very low and far forward uh, instant center. This means that, if you saw my previous video of instant center, that the bike is quite active under braking. Moreover, you can actually see this in a more intuitive way, okay? So just look to the rotation of the chain stay around the disc. As you can see, the chain stay moves just a bit around the disc, okay? So the brake squat is quite low, okay? Braking does not affect the suspension. On the other hand, if you compare to a bike like this, you can see that the brake calliter moves much more around the disc. Okay, so just see the difference, how much more the, the calliter moves, moves around the disc when compared to the Knolly bike. Okay, so the Knolly bikes are indeed very active to braking forces with an anti-rise about 50%, which is a good value. Regarding the progressivity, the bike is quite progressive, okay, as you can see here in the leverage ratio curve, and it has an overall progressivity around 30%, which is a, a nice value for a, an enduro bike. So, as a conclusion, the Knolly bikes uh, have a very low anti squat because they use a different philosophy, okay, so you are dependent on the shock platform and not in the anti-squat characteristics of the suspension. Moreover, the braking is pretty good, it's pretty active braking, and the progressivity is always good, okay, it's, uh, it has a nice progressivity, in this case, on the Warden model, around 30%. And that's it, guys, so see you next time, bye!